Hey guys, Dave Keller here with Market Misbehaviors. No doubt there's been strength in the equity markets off of the low in October of 2022. As we end the month of January 2023, we see continued improvement in stocks, particularly when you look at the market breadth indicators, right? The measures of participation. Today, we're going to talk about one particular breadth indicator continuing to show strength, the McClellan Oscillator. So there are a lot of different ways to measure market breadth. And when people ask me what breadth represents, I always use the word participation. When you have a major index like the S&P or the NASDAQ and you see it doing a certain thing, the question always remains, what about the stocks that comprise those indexes, right? So if you have the S&P 500, that's based on the movements of 500 individual stocks weighted in different ways and how they are aggregated into the performance of the index as a whole. The S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, any of those big indexes, for the most part are market cap weighted, meaning the largest stocks have a huge weight. So for something like the S&P 500, the top 10 to 20 stocks are usually about the same weight as the bottom 300 stocks in the S&P. What that means is one name like Microsoft or Apple or Amazon has the same weight as 50 to 100 smaller mid cap companies that also are big enough to be in the S&P 500. That's how big of a weight those mega cap stocks really are. Breadth indicators are almost always measured in uh, equal weighted terms, which gives you a way to think about the individual stocks, not just the mega cap names, which are weighted so heavily, but also all of those other names. And by equal weighting, meaning each stock has an equal weighting out of the 500 or whatever stocks in the universe, it's a much better measure of participation, how those individual names that comprise the indexes are actually doing. Today, we'll talk about one indicator called the McClellan Oscillator, named after uh, Sherman and Mary and McClellan, who are uh, market strategists uh, with uh, great success over their, uh, over their careers. Before we get to that chart, by the way, uh, if you like this sort of thinking about technical analysis, market uh, history, and uh, investor psychology, won't you subscribe to my channel? Also, give the video a like if you appreciate it. We'd very much appreciate that back. Put a comment below. Do you think the next 10% move in the S&P 500 is going to be higher or lower and why? Drop a comment below and let me know. As we're looking at the chart here, this is the, called the McClellan Oscillator. Now, one of the indicators I use often is uh, advanced decline uh, data. So advanced decline line data or advanced decline data basically every day says how many stocks close up, how many stocks close down. And that's called the daily advanced decline uh, ratio or advanced decline uh, number. If you aggregate those readings over time, you create a cumulative advanced decline line. Uh, and those are really actually pretty helpful to, uh, to watch. And a lot of times it's interesting to see what the major averages do versus those advanced decline lines. Now, Sherman and Marion McClellan uh, actually made an improvement uh, to, that, to the raw cumulative advanced decline uh, indicators, and they turned it into what's called the McClellan Oscillator. Now, there's some detailed, um, not too complicated math, but a little bit of math that I'm going to gloss over very quickly. I will tell you on places like stock charts, there's a chart school that go into detail about how the, the calculations are actually done. But uh, basically what the McClellans did was turn the uh, raw advanced decline data into a uh, ratio, but by, or into an oscillator by looking at the um, uh, e um, exponential averages or an exponential moving average of the raw data. So the raw data usually is pretty noisy, right? And can be, can be super noisy, just like any sort of raw daily uh, reading could be. By looking at a cumulative ratio, you smooth it out a little bit. But what the McClellans did was actually did equal, excuse me, um, exponential moving averages of that advanced decline data. And they looked at the difference between two exponential averages, which if that sounds familiar to you, that's because that's how the MACD indicator and the PPO indicators, they have a similar methodology of looking at the difference between two exponential averages. Fast forward to, uh, to this chart of the McClellan Oscillator. This is a ratio adjusted McClellan Oscillator, which basically uh, makes it a consistent look back uh, if you're looking at deeper history. And again, the stock charts, uh, chart school pages have a full explanation of the math behind some of these. I'll put a link in to that uh, to that description uh, in, or to a link to that page in the description below the uh, video here. But how do you use the McClellan Oscillator? As you can see, it's an oscillator, right? So it revolves around that zero level. I have this horizontal line indicating the zero level. Very simply, if the McClellan Oscillator is above zero, those are bullish conditions. If it's below zero, those are bearish conditions. Now, if it's a little hard to see that relationship, I made these color-coded 
uh, areas just to highlight when the oscillator was above zero in green or below zero in red. And I skipped some of these little noisy parts just to show the general trend of the oscillator over time. And you can see when the McClellan oscillator is below zero, the market tends to be trending lower. You can see when the McClellan oscillator is above zero, meaning we're in the greener section, you can see it uh, it's sloping higher. And again, so the, the change in trend is not when it goes lower, it's when it crosses the zero line. But one of the interesting leading indicators you can find them with the McClellan oscillators to look for divergences, right? So you can see here in August of last year, the market was making higher highs and the McClellan oscillator actually made a lower high soon after we crossed below the zero level. That was the sell signal there. Same thing happened here in November of last year. We saw the price of the S&P going higher, the McClellan oscillator actually making lower peaks. It crossed below the zero line. That was here right, after, uh, right before the uh, pullback here in December. Once again, we can see a similar pattern here at the end of January of 2023, right? The S&P 500 going higher, the McClellan oscillator actually sloping downwards. Now, again, that on its own is not what I would consider a sell signal using the indicator, but a lot of times it's a precursor to the McClellan oscillator going below zero. That's the real signal that the trends have changed. Now, why does that make sense? Again, think back to what advanced decline data is telling you. When the market's going higher, you tend to have more stocks closing higher than closing lower on an average day. And the cumulative advanced decline data tends to mirror the movement in the markets. But what happens a lot of times is at the end of the move, you will see a bit of a disconnection where the index continues to move in one place, but the advanced decline data starts to change because a lot of the individual names are actually starting to, uh, to change their trajectory. This McClellan oscillator is designed to capture that. And as we are heading into a pretty busy uh, period here, we're in the middle of earnings season here at the end of January, we have the Fed meeting this week, first one of the year, and looking to see if the McClellan oscillator can hold that zero level is important. Now, if this actually seems like an interesting approach, what you may also want to do is look at what's called the McClellan summation index, which takes the McClellan oscillator and, and uh, accumulates those values. So it's sort of like a cumulative uh, uh, McClellan oscillator. So every day when the McClellan oscillator is in a positive, you add that to the running total of the summation index. Every time the McClellan oscillator is negative, you subtract it from the running total. So if you think about how that math works out, when the McClellan oscillator would go below zero, that would make the summation index actually start to slope downwards. So when the summation index has turned from uptrend to downtrend, that lines up with when the McClellan oscillator went from above zero to below zero because the net change every day is negative as opposed to positive. Now, if you look at this over time, I'm looking at a little bit more data. Now we're looking at five years of the McClellan Oscillator. And you can see it's been pretty noisy here in the last two years or so. But if you look before that, look at how well the McClellan Summation Index, particularly when it goes above and below zero, has lined up really well with the major turning points in the S&P 500. Now, it's not, a, uh, it's not designed to uh, pick out the turn as they happened. The way you use the summation index is see when it crosses that zero line, it usually confirms after the uh, market has actually turned. So looking for where the summation index moves relative to the McClellan oscillator can be really helpful as well. If we would get a sell-off around the Fed meeting or because the earnings season, uh, earnings season here uh, starts, to, uh, starts to give some negative sentiment uh, as expressed in price uh, and, and investors reacting to the earnings data, look to see if the McClellan summation index turns lower. That would combine with the McClellan oscillator going below zero. And also, if and when we get a break below zero, that can often be a big warning sign <coughs> Excuse me, for stocks. You'll notice the last time it was above zero and went below was at the uh, mid-December of last year, which is when we were pulling back. That's why that pullback to S&P 3800 was a key decision point. In this case, we actually resolved higher. Does the same thing happen here in early 2023? That is the McClellan Oscillator and a companion indicator called the McClellan Summation Index. As a reminder, I put a link below for a description, full information with all the formulas of how those indicators are calculated. But in, in general, you want to look for when they're above or below zero. At this point, at the end of January 2023, they remain in a bullish positioning. As we get into a, another period of market uncertainty, I would look to see if they're able to hold that zero level in any sort of market pullback. For Market Misbehavior, I'm Dave Keller. Be well and be safe. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye now.